Working by the blowing horn of the steam train travelling west to Chocotaw, I can't shake this weird sensation surrounding what Shakespeare wrote about when he wrote about the mortal coil. The very idea that when we pass to the ferment of heaven, that our bodies will merely lie in state like a pair of well-worn chaps. That it will merely serve as food for worms. If we are lucky to be buried underneath, that is. We could lay about the plains after being gut-shot and picked upon by vultures and crows, our flesh gnawed and spewed for every last critter to come along for a snacking. As I eyeball the Pinkerton standing around the body of a dead pro Navajo, I have to hold back the bile in my stomach. The Pinkerton's all in black, milling about with careful precision. I can't help to remember that term for a grouping of crows. A grouping of crows are called a murder. Westlake! Uh, Randy, I was in the middle of... Daydreaming? I was going to say pontificating, but I guess daydreaming works. What do you have here? A dead Navajo. Third one this week. Why do you phrase it in that particular way? There's nothing discriminating in my phrasing, Westlake. I'm merely pointing out the facts that we have now three Navajo Indians found in similar patterns. Similar? Yes. Prone. On their stomachs. With these snakebite markings on their necks. Snake bites? This doesn't look like a rattler or copperhead. You've seen that many snake bites that you can determine the species type, Westlake? I'm impressed. Somebody has to be. But yes, I was raised on a farm where we kept snakes. We had all different kinds because... Because the man who thought it was my daddy used to try and extract the venom. God knows why. You there! What's your name, woman? This is Luciana Pettifor, sir. She's the local cow tonsa. A leech? Tonsa is fine if you can't manage the syllables. Feisty. Ill-mannered if you ask me. What is your business here, Tonsa? As you said, there have been three of these murders. Now, I may only be the local leech and not the Pinkerton service, but I know a bit about bloodlettings. And this looks like a vena puncture to me. If you knew anything about phlebotomy, I could explain to you, you see. Yeah, 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 Madam Pettifor. I'm sure if I need a haircut and a lecture, I can come by your place and you could suffice. But this is a Pinkerton matter. And as such, this scene is off limits to civilians. I only suffer Westlake because he actually comes up with a good thought or two. Thanks. But I do not need a woman to dictate her thoughts onto me as well. Very well, Inspector. I'm sure you won't be needing these then. What are these two things? They're called finger sticks. And if you ask me, I'd say this was no snake bite. I hate when people need the last word. Hmm, yes. Snakes don't bite. Ah, torchlight. The comforts of home finally expanding to this new world. The language is even changing. Amalgamating. I actually heard a watchman say pardoner. You? You find the strangest things interesting, Westlake. I find you interesting, Tubman. I beg you not to call me, though, especially not in public. And I think you tend to overreact, my darky friend. It's because we are friends. I don't brand your knuckles with that comment. Pshaw! I was merely stating the fact that although your mother may indeed be wanted in various states, Chocotaw is not one of them. Or territories. You know what I mean? What is it you are looking for, Wesley? Hey! Black smoke! You know I'm not a pugilist, right? Yes, sir. I'm a blacksmith. Yeah, I'm a blacksmith. <laughs> I called you black smoke darky, Dan. I ain't seen nothing blacker than you on a human being before. You made a tar or what? <laughs> Maybe your mama was rolling manure with pigs. <laughs> Do not speak of my mother. Oh, be Jesus. And furthermore, gentlemen, and believe you me, I'm using the term loosely, do not think that because of your service to this agency as a posse gives you certain liberties, I will indeed throw you into jail. I will indeed send you across territory to the south prison below Mississippi. What was it so bad that he said, Swinger? I'm sure by now you've heard it all. He calls his mum a dirty horse, sir. And no man likes that. You wouldn't, would you, Radley? Nothing more than that. Right, Swinger? Nothing more than that. 
Good. Long Shadow. We have work to do. Shangri-La, Long Shadow. Close, but not close enough. Tell me about this cosmetologist your telegram mentioned. You could see for yourself. Look, the local barbershop. I always wondered what that red and white pole means. Ah, uh, tonsils have been around for ages, lad. They were called upon to do all forms of bloodletting, cutting and extracting. To let people know the difference, they would wrap red and white rags around a pole outside their place so people knew the skills the tonsil had. Red was for surgery, and white was for barbering. Surgery? Yep. The tonsils were the ones that did most of the doctoring, from surgery to dentistry. What did the doctors do? I'm still wondering about that myself. Wait, well, hello, gentlemen. Good day to you all. I'm Liam McDonough. Welcome to our salon. Where's the tonsil? I'm the tonsil, good sirs. He's meant the filly. Injure him. West of Lake. I know, I know. Leave the investigating to the investigators. I can't let them find these vials of blood. I think not they will understand my need of this blood. Or to solve the mystery as to why the others are making their taking of it public. Derek Lawson, Westlake. Shamim Ahmed, Luciana. Paul Hiltz, Ranley. Patrick Graham, Swinger, and McDonough. Noel Ross, uh, what was it? Um, Ranch, Ranch Hand, and Long Shadow. Uh, 